Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty forever. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ, when he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with a woman. But no one said, What do you seek? Or, Why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the town and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. In with the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We are now celebrating the third Sunday of the Holy 50 Days. The last two Sundays one after immediately after resurrection was Thomas Sunday and the main verse blessed he who believes without seeing 
And last Sunday was about the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Today speaks about the water of life or the fountain of life. And that's the famous chapter from the Samaritan woman from John 4. We all know the story and we read it in the past Lent. As you remember, this woman was under a lot of stress because she had a lot of reputation that she is not a good woman. So she goes to draw water in a time that normally is not right to draw that water. And she went to draw on the middle of the day at 12 noon, but our Lord was waiting for her. And the dialogue was, give me water, you don't have a pot, how can you speak with me and you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan. And then he tells her, if you would know, you would have asked me to give you water. If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And that's the main issue today, the living water, the water of baptism, the water that we were all born from when we were little young, or if we were baptized as old people. And as our fathers and also in Revelation, there are two types of birth. The first birth, which everyone is born from his mother's womb, and that's the natural, earthly, human, physical birth. And the second birth is the birth from the Holy Spirit and the water, this, the birth through baptism. This is the birth that really anchors each one of us in the tree of life. This is the birth that gives us a new life. And the life that we were living in before is dead. But the one who lives in me is Christ, who lives in me and I in him. And that's why he told the Samaritan woman, I want to give you living water. And later on he told her, the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. There is a water that if we drink from will produce everlasting life and a lot of fountains of water will come from it. Our way of baptism in the Orthodox Church that this is a true birth. A true birth meaning the person who is now born has the ability to inherit the kingdom of God. The newborn is born from Christ. He has the new image of Christ as he was initially created, but his image was corrupted with the sin of Adam. But through baptism, we renew our image back and we go back to the first image upon which we were all created the image of Christ. And that's why we were saints that day. On the day of my baptism, I was a saint on that day. It's amazing when you say it. I was a saint one day, where I am today from sainthood. Sainthood is not a strange behavior that we need to be, but rather it's an image, a behavior, a conduct we need to go back to. Returning back to sainthood is the spiritual struggle that all of us need to be in and going forward to all our lives. And that's why the baptism need to be renewed. And one of the ways to renew baptism, since baptism is only once, cannot be repeated, is through repentance. In order for us to renew the waters of baptism, we use the tears of repentance. And again, that was brought up by our Lord to the Samaritan woman for her to live for the everlasting life, 
for her to have springs of water coming forth from her, she needs to repent. She needs to leave her old ways and start a new one. And that's why he told her, go and call your husband. Not to try to embarrass her, on the contrary, he was very respectful. But rather, go and call your husband, and the answer would be, I don't have one. So he basically accepted her confession, and one sense from now on, to live for the everlasting life. Because if we drink from this water, we will live forever. And that's why the very last verse in Revelation, the Spirit and the Bride will call to our Lord who is saying, I am coming quickly. The Spirit and the Bride are saying, Amin, come quickly. And whoever hears will say, come. And whoever thirsts will come and will drink from this everlasting water that gives life forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the fountain of water. And that's why on the cross, a fountain of blood and water came out from his side through the spear that pierced him on the ninth hour. And this water and blood, St. Augustine once wrote about it and said, as the first Adam slept on paradise, and Eve came from Adam's side. The second Adam, Jesus Christ, slept on the cross, and from his side, the second Eve, the church came out. And the second Eve, or the church, is two main pillars, baptism depicted by water, and blood and communion depicted by blood. And for our Lord to have water and blood from his side, the church now is born on these two main columns, baptism and communion. And last week was the Sunday of the bread of life, while this week is the Sunday of the water of life. In the book of Genesis, Adam was prevented from eating from the tree of life and a curse was placed. But in the book of Revelation, the curse was taken out, and the tree of life now produces 12 fruits for each month. And there is a fountain or a lake of water guides people to the tree of life. No one can approach the tree of life except those who have gone through baptism, and those have washed and renewed their baptism through repentance. And to connect even more events together, on Holy Thursday, when our Lord was washing the feet of the disciples, including Judas, our Lord was prevented first by Peter, who told them, there is no way you can wash my feet. So our Lord told them, Unless I wash your feet, you have no part with me in my service. And Peter excitedly said, No, not just washing my feet, wash me altogether. And our Lord told him, Those who were bathed or baptized do not need except washing their feet. And the meaning of this interaction between our Lord and Peter, that basically those who were baptized and have gone through the seal of baptism need not to re repeat their baptism, but rather when they sin, they wash their feet, they repent. So the act of washing of the feet is almost on a daily basis in order to renew the function and the grace of baptism. And that's why on the hourly prayer of the Igbeya, on the compliant prayer before we sleep, we ask our Lord saying, if we have sinned against you by thought or by action or by senses, 
forgive us. And that act of repentance is as if every night we're going through our baptism, remembering and reminding ourselves that this white garment, unless it's washed every day through repentance, will not look as white when we present ourselves at the last day carrying the garment of baptism. Finally, there was a main parable that our Lord have discussed right before his crucifixion about the wedding of the son of the king. And he told those who were listening that a lot of people were invited, but they gave excuses and they didn't come. Finally, our Lord called upon all the poor and the lame and those who are in the streets and asked them to all come and dine on his supper to celebrate his son's wedding. And then our Lord found one person who did not have the garment of the wedding. And he told them, friend, how did you get in? If you don't have the garment of the wedding, then you jump through, not the door, you came from the window. And he told everybody to take him outside. And the meaning of this, this parable, that unless we have the garment of the wedding, the baptism, we cannot enter into the celebration of the wedding, which is the final return of our Lord. And the door is Christ. And the garment is free, is given to each one upon entering. But there is one who did not go through the door, did not go through Christ. And Christ has and own his kingdom. We call it Christ's kingdom. If he had not gone through that door, he has no business to get in without the garment and hence is not allowed to go further. So, to summarize, we are all baptized. We all have been dressed with that garment of baptism. But this garment gets soiled, tainted with so many sins every day in order to keep it gloriously glistening. We need to repent on daily basis as the Samaritan woman have done. And hence, fountains of water, fountains of life will produce, will come through from us and we will be able to preach to others, come, come and taste how sweet the Lord is. Glory be to God forever. Amen.